So, Michael Lesser, good to see you. Good to be here. You battled through the uh, Dublin traffic with the rain and everything else just to, to get in to see us, which is great. Well, it is, but I mean, you should look at it. There's no point in us being surprised by the weather in Ireland these days, but yesterday was nice. I was towing at one stage of going down to British Bay because the weather was so nice, and I just got a bit busy. And then you'd look out today and you'd say, British Bay, why would you even, like, considering <laughs> that? Kind of, you know? Yeah. yeah. Look, as I said, we're, we're well used to that. But yeah, I was down you, you have to take your opportunity in Ireland. When, when, well, when it's there, but, get the car loaded up and go. But like, Last week I was down in Connemara, the family were down for a week down there and the house that we we had rented for the week, you could see seven beaches from the house across the bay out near Manon there and all that kind of stuff, you know, and we're walking along one day and my wife said, you know, it's amazing, there's nobody around, like there was nobody on any of the beaches kind of and we had it more or less to ourselves and isn't that weird? And I said, look, I said, if the weather was, was consistently better in Ireland, yeah. I said, you wouldn't be able to see the seven beaches. There'd be a hundred apartment blocks in between. I think. <laughs> yeah, you know, so right. you have to put up with that. Yeah, exactly. The yeah, seafood yeah. chowder was good, though, no, I have to well, say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you can always get in for a pint as well. And the pint, yeah, of course, yes, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So good to see you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Not yeah, too bad at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not to uh, kick it off on a, on a, on a, on a health yeah. uh, uh, point, but obviously you had a... A scare last year, and and, well, and how you feeling after? It if you well, you know the thing about it is, as I as I've been kind of saying to people in the year since that, or fourteen months or whatever it is yeah. now. Just and, when, and when, did it, when did it? When did it? It happened in happen? June, the beginning of June, right. last year. <coughs> Excuse me, and so that's obviously whatever it is, on fourteen months ago. Yeah, but the, and obviously people are going to ask you how you're feeling naturally enough, of course, you know. Yeah. But you, what you're trying to explain to people is there's no feeling about it. In the sense that you you either lived or you died, yes. You know, and yeah. I got a, a real lucky break, and I, just I got a, just, saved. Just for anyone who mm. doesn't, like you were playing golf, correct? I've been playing golf down in Portumna, yeah. And I had travelled down with Vincent Hogan of the Irish Independent because Vincent offered to drive. And after the golf, we went into the the the, uh, the golf club for a pint or two. But I was conscious of the fact that Vincent wasn't drinking and that I didn't want to hold him up. So yeah, I said, come on, you know, let's get out of here and we yeah. go home. So he dropped me back to the house. And when I went into the, uh, my house, I suddenly realized I'd forgotten the phone. Now, it wasn't a big deal, but I said to myself, I, you know, if, if he's not gone too far, he'll save me the trouble in the morning, I have to go over to his house and blah, 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 and all that. So I rang him from the house phone. And he said, look, I'm only up the road. He says, I'll swing around and I'll come back down again. And the last thing I remember was opening the front door again, so to just take the phone out of his hand and let him off. And uh, that was on a Friday night. And the next thing that I recall, sort of recall, was Tuesday of the the following week, and I woke up wow. in St Vincent's. But I don't even recall much of that because, you know, there was another f- four or five days. Then I was just not wow. really kind of in it, you know. And people uh, since I've I've met a couple of people who said to me oh sure I was in which in the hospital you know and I'm going oh yeah of course yeah not a clue not a clue no, yeah. no yeah. and did you feel anything during the day was no. There, no not a thing no absolutely not the things that I didn't feel was unwell yeah uh, I didn't get a heart attack so this is this is what you know people uh, that there's a difference between a cardiac arrest and a heart attack you know heart attack is pains in the chest and all that kind of stuff cardiac arrest just simply means your heart stops right okay simple as that yeah uh, so there was no prior warning. There isn't a prior warning to something like that, obviously. You know, uh, I didn't see any angels or devils or meet George. <laughs> you didn't see any didn't, shining lights. Didn't no, I didn't meet George Best. I didn't see a Galway <laughs> fella going around with the Liam McCarthy cup under his arm or <laughs> anything like that. You know, so yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't pure fantasy. <laughs> So unbelievable! Like, so just, just back. And obviously, I can imagine Vincent Hogan. I'd say was just like obviously your wife. I think came well, down. When, when, yeah, when 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 uh, Vincent came back to the house and he w- he walked in, obviously to the path into the front door, and I was lying on the on the ground, and for some reason, both himself and and, and Anne within the same few minutes, he thought I was messing, kind of just lying on the ground like an Egypt, you yeah. know, as you do, kind of like at midnight, kind of you know, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. lying in the front hall. <laughs> and but yeah, then when he realised there was something wrong, he called Anne, uh, just shouted upstairs, you know. So Anne came down, and when she saw me, she thought I was pissed. Right. So she started poking me with her foot, you know, just <laughs> the usual just, thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. oh yeah, sorry, I pissed again on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, give him an old boot. Yeah. Wake him up. <laughs> So then they they obviously realised that I was neither messing or actually pissed. Jeez. 
and and then I have to say, like she did a fabulous job of she she wasn't trained in first aid or anything like that. Wow! But and this is a, a thing I think it's not any harm to get across to people, and the the, the medical people will tell you this themselves. Mm. Do something. Right. Yes. Do yeah. <laughs> something. It's you don't have to say, "Oh, well, I'm not really trained in this or anything like that," you know. And what I discovered afterwards was she just did press uh, chest compressions on me. Right. But you know, Vincent said Geez, she really went for it, like she she gave you a leathering kind of, you know. Yeah. But afterwards, quite uh, often they say that actually can break, like. The, I, the yeah. Rib but that, but again, that's that's something they will tell you as well. You know, you're going to die. Yeah. So what's a few broken ribs or yeah, something? Course. You know, it doesn't make any difference, kind yes, of, you know. Yeah. But the important thing about what she did in terms of the aggressiveness that she went about doing the compressions was that it was getting the blood to my brain. It wasn't just kind of circulating it to a point. And if you if you ever do a first aid course, funnily enough, I've done a few of them myself, and they show you on on some of the modern mannequins that they do when you're doing the press, they show you how far you're compressions okay are taking the the, the pulse the blood, if you like right okay, and usually yes. it's only to around here which isn't good enough because even if you survive you're likely to have brain damage so right, okay so you have to go at it hard hard yeah 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 yeah, yeah. did the kicks at all help the day that she was giving you did she the, the kicks <laughs> the kicks <laughs> i woke up kind of just the pain in my side and pain in my knee kind of, yeah, you know, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ribs were the least of your worries <laughs> Yeah, unbelievable. So what you came to, as you say, three four days later, and then what another week until you kind of yeah, got it would have been somewhat. It responsive. would have been from the time I, I came round to actually being sort of back in the on the planet again. It would have been another maybe four or five days. Wow. Mm. And did they say it's just it's just one of these things? Like, was there anything there's underlying no, or no? There, there was no there was no real reason for it. And in the old days, it's not Joe you know, Molly you'd hear, you hear no, no, well, no, that could happen. That'd be yeah. more mental, I'd say, than nothing else. Yeah, but like in the old days, you'd hear of people. Oh, did you hear so and so? He dropped dead. You know, they didn't say he got a cardiac arrest or blah blah yes. blah or whatever. Now, I, I suppose I should put into the equation that in 2012, I had heart failure. Right. So okay. that was there was obviously something wrong with my heart. So it wasn't just entirely out of the blue okay but having recovered from that and having made lifestyle changes and on the right medication and all that kind of thing and being under you know uh, regular enough care kind of you know going into the hospital for your checkups and Check, whatever yeah. but it's still it's still something that can yeah can just jump out so you, do, you see you, do, you just maintain it now and keep an eye on it and all you maintain it yeah, uh, yeah. what i have now is i have a defibrillator Right. So don't panic if it happens. You don't have to sort of go into first aid mode straight away. Kind of, yeah. you know, just grab me by the two legs and get me down to the local hospital. You know. so or just put you out on the street. Or, yeah, but, yeah, actually yeah. this evening that would probably Nothing work because it's raining so hard I'd probably jump up myself. <laughs> exactly, you know. yeah. Well, it's amazing. Like, you know, you probably, I don't know if you saw over the weekend out in Meath, um, a young lad was playing for Curraha at the weekend and mm. he just collapsed yeah um, well that's exactly it and yeah. actually the lads there was a defibrillator in, in the back of someone's car and two of his uh, teammates managed to kind of keep him going amazing stuff you know oh, it is. And, I mean, and saved his life yeah, oh no question about it I mean uh, you know going back 30-40 years ago if, if something that happened to me you'd be dead end of story yeah. you know yeah. there was no we- I was also lucky I got a few lucky breaks in this thing I, was, I meant to do the lotto numbers that week <laughs> uh, because apart from, from the, the good look of getting Vincent back to the house. Yes. The fact that Anne did exactly what was needed to be done. But as it happens, there is an ambulance station up the road from our house. Wow, right, okay. Uh, because we live just down the road from uh, Lachlan Stone Hospital. Okay, yeah. So, in fact, the ambulance was down in less than 10 minutes. Right. You know, uh, all this is grand, except you're, you're fully aware of the fact that if this thing happened to you out in the west of Ireland or out in yeah. the wilds of Donegal, you just might not have been yes, as yeah, lucky, yeah, you know. But, yeah, but look, yeah. I mean, that's that's life, you know. Yeah. So, and, you, and, and like, I mean, so you're, you're looking well and you're feeling good. It's great to see. Well, it is, despite the fact that the last two or three weeks, the, the, the hits of the Galway footballers getting bet by Tipperary and then, you know, the, yeah. the hurlers repeating it last Sunday, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> So but what you, did you think? Did you did you? Did, it was a, a fantastic game, you know. Like I mean, the hurling was was a great game. It yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen just to, I suppose to get onto the the sport side? Like I mean, it's you know I think when you obviously listen to Jer and what Jer was saying about the hurlers and maybe sometimes about the footballers, you know, and there's always this thing put about it. Sure. The like I even remember like when you play you play the footballers, there was always this kind of thing of well, if you, if you can get stuck into them kind of early going, might fade off and. 
You know, rightly or wrongly, there was always this kind of idea that you know they were they were they enjoyed it too much sometimes. Like, yeah, yeah. Do you think things s- of, of no? I, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, these are all the theories of life, kind of. You know, yeah. and and if you, if you're going through a patch and you haven't been sort of winning any major trophies through a period, everybody will have a theory about it, just exactly why that that is. But you know. Whether that's true or not, it's another story. I mean, the other side of the coin is that a lot of people would also believe that any time that Galway have struggled in the football to get to Croke Park over the last few years, but normally when they get there, they seem to find, as happened in 1998 when they won the Gold Ireland, yes, I mean, Galway football wasn't going well that time either. Mm-hmm. You know, they were in, in, in fairly kind of rag order kind of for the year or two before that. Yes. And that year they got a lucky break. Ross Common really should have beaten them down in Tume and... Galway got a draw from a very uh, fortuitous free at the end of the game and won the replay then in Roscommon. Mm. But when they, once they got to Croke Park, suddenly game it clicked. You know, so yeah. that's why I think it wasn't so much that Tip beat them, but Tip beat them comprehensively. Mm. And you, you have to say, Anthony, you, you cannot get it out of your mind that, that psychologically or mentally Galway had this game played already. Yes. You know, yeah. now... The management, Kevin Walsh, everybody else can drum it into you. Mm-hmm. No, this folk, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. But if you were thinking to yourself, I will manage these lads, can yeah. you know, and yeah. see what happens. Yeah. You know, well, it's, it's funny because it, it, you know, you mentioned the All Ireland. Like in you know, one, I'll always remember. You know, when we obviously played Galway. Yeah. And, and and we had beaten Kerry so comprehensively. Sure. Like I mean, the crowd were kind of Yahoo and every pass. And I remember just kind of saying to myself, "This could come back to haunt us." And Absolutely. It, the, and it and did. The, yeah. For yeah. The, the you know for the three weeks after. It, I remember Sean Boyle and just he did everything. Mm. You know, he was telling us how good Galway were. Mm. He kept doing everything to kind of mm. pump up Galway. Of course, yeah. and and actually, it's funny. It nearly worked, I think, because actually the, the first half. You remember the first half? Yeah, was very tight That game, yeah. Um, and then you know, Porrick obviously started to kind of get in his in, in his in his. He found another gear. Half, yeah. Mm. But me just fell away so badly, oh, you sure, know. And it was sure, nearly yeah. kind of like, well, actually, these team are that good, sure, you know? yeah. Um, and it's amazing how the psychological. Of course, thing works. it is. It, it is. But I mean, as well as all that, you know, this is sport, mm. and it's despite what fellas try to make of it a lot of the times, it isn't actually science. Yeah. You know, if yeah, you could, if yeah. you could just sit down and, and plan this on a computer or on a chip or something else or, or get out sort of diagrams and say right I have the whole thing figured out here lads you yes, know yeah. that, that isn't the re- reality of sport there is a science to sport mm. but, but at the same time it, is, it will never change that once fellas go out past the white lines on the field then who knows things start to change yes. and it's a question of can you cope with the change as they happen? Have you got the the resolve and the reserves in yourself to deal with it? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I mean, like, you know, we were talking about the hurling on Sunday. Really, in fact, in the hurling, Galway didn't do anything different to Tipperary. Correct. You know, when you lose a high-scoring game by a point, what yeah. really did you run? Not a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Except you just lost by a point. Yes. You know, so yeah, yeah. And a bit of bad luck with, with, and of course, with Joe's and injury of course. and a couple yeah, of yeah, things. Yeah. things. Yeah. But I mean, that's, again, th- th- these things happen in games. You know, yeah. it's, it's just yeah. the, the normality of it, you know. Yeah, and and that's, that is true of, of every sport. You oh, know, I mean, yeah. why, why do golfers go out one day and win a tournament? And then the next day they go. They can't hit the ball out of their way. Kind of, you know. Yeah. Well, I know that one, all right. Kind of. You know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how have you felt? Like, I mean, thirty-two years. Am I correct in that saying is this correct. is your thirty-second yeah. year in Sunday yeah. game? Phenomenal, yeah. unbelievable record. Like it is. With, with every years, passing year, it becomes more head scratching. Kind of, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Did you just? Uh, did you miss it when you were ill? Like, I mean, how how, how long of a break did you have in that? Time? I was the, last year. I was six weeks out. Right, okay, so, yeah. Well, Des was doing it, such a bad job, they said you better get in here quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I mean, mind. that's... that's Sorry about that, yeah, but, but I tell you what, that's the remarkable thing about what happened to me in the sense that, you know, very easily I could have been dead, but at the same time, having, having survived that little hiccup, yeah. I actually would have been in a position to go back before that. Amazing. It was It was both... Uh, doctors and RTE ticking boxes for two weeks right okay uh, just to cover themselves and we didn't put them back too quickly and blah blah yeah. blah, blah and all so that. you'd actually but get over you're back quicker from a cardiac arrest that nearly killed you in four weeks than you are from a hamstring injury say correct and right yes absolutely <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. you could you could be stretchered off in a GEA match <laughs> and not be right for a couple of weeks to go kind of you yeah, know yeah. Uh, but in this case I was no down no concussion protocol or anything like that just bang straight no in. no I mean there, yeah. th- look there was the, one of the one of the the, the first tests in the hospital after I, I had actually kind of come back to life if you like was there was a lot of, of psychological tests 
and Joe Bradley was brought in for Bradley, those. Others. Actually, Bradley did come to visit me, but I don't <laughs> yeah. remember that. Um, <laughs> but uh, and it's just to see in case there's any any brain damage or right, anything like okay. that. Can you know? Okay. So this is all yeah. part of it, you know. Yeah. But you're right. Like once you clear those uh, obstacles, yeah. I was down uh, at the Monster Hurling final last year, and I'm sitting in the crowd, and I'm looking around me saying. I could actually be doing this program here, you know. I mean, I've actually gone to Thurlis, you know. I'm sitting here, yeah. You know, it wouldn't have actually taken an awful lot more to just put a bit of makeup on and yeah, and where you go, chat. yeah, you know. yeah. But anyway, look, that's, that's and, it. and and like I mean, do you find yourself, you know, it's very hard. I, I, I you find it you now kind of when you step away from football as a player, you find it, you know, if you're managing teams, you find it sometimes very hard to move away from the playing aspect and getting mm. involved mm. in that kind of way. When you're watching games, and especially when you're watching Galway, you know, do you ha- like do you find it difficult to kind of pull yourself away from it to kind of be, you know, not get like try to analyze it, and as much as, you know, analyzing it and having the lads there to analyze it, you know, without even giving your own opinion, you know, sure, like it, it's yeah. the thing of asking maybe the silly question sometimes yeah. when you know the answer already. Yeah, yourself. yeah, yeah. Like it, yeah. It, it's that's is that a skill you've honed over years? Of course or? it is. Yeah. yeah, and 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 you've learned over the years as well to. And I suppose also the the health issues that we've just been talking about, in my case, you get a different perspective on things. But I think it's more when you've done something for 32 years, you will see Galway win, you'll see Galway lose or whatever the case may be, you know. Yeah. So you kind of take it. I mean, last Sunday, fellas were saying to me afterwards, I must be very disappointed, you know. And I said, mm, we got away with it last year. We beat them by a point, you know. Yes, so, yeah, you know, you, yeah. you, you have to accept these things, you know. Yes, and yeah. they come around and they go around and life goes on. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, 32 years, you know, and, and, and the amount of fellas that I suppose have gone through your fingers, as they say, you know, yeah. between analysts and the change in the game and stuff. Like, yeah. uh, like how it's moved on between Twitter, between social media, between even the focus, I think, on the analysis now, mm. you know, never mind the fashion. We can get to that <laughs> later on. But the, like... Is it, is it something that you've embraced? Um, is it something that you've welcomed, you know, all the way along? Or, or do you hark it's back to the days of yourself and, you know, just uh, Eamon Cregan and a few of the boys? No, no, but they, they were good days as well, yeah. you know. Uh, and all of this has been a journey. And the journey actually started for me in the early 70s when I was working with the Tume Herald. Right. And, like, the first uh, All-Ireland that I covered was in 74, which was Galway and Dublin okay. for the paper. Then there was 75 with the Hurlers, 79 with the Hurlers. Uh, none of these were winning occasions, by the way. And, you know, and then you moved to, or I moved to RT Radio. And I did that for about five years before the Sunday game thing started. So yeah. it's always been kind of, you know, moving, moving steps into doing what I'm doing now. Yes. But, as you said, the early days of the Sunday game... It was a completely different thing. You know, it was it was a very popular program in that time as well. Absolutely. But it was a Sunday night program. There was no live matches. The live thing changed everything. Did it? You know, it just yeah. took it from being a highlights program on a Sunday night. And we had the crack, you know, with Enda Collar or Raymond Creek, you know, whatever the yes, case yeah, may yeah. be. But, like, once it became... I, I didn't believe in this thing. When, when RT and Tim O'Connor, who was then the head of sport, suggested these live matches, I said to myself, no, this isn't, this isn't the English This will never take off. Yeah, well, I mean, genuinely, <laughs> yeah. no, I didn't because... Why? What was your fear? I, I thought it wasn't a fear, but I just felt Ireland was a small country mm. with a small population. People went out to see matches here, and it didn't necessarily have a big population to draw on. I mean, if, if you see English league football, you know, over the years, mm. if you go to South Africa, if you go to South America, you know, you go to, to, to Kuala Lumpur, and I've done all these things, mm. go into a bar or into your hotel room, you see match all on. these games. Match on. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's that big. And in actual fact, the first year that we did it, it didn't really work. The audience figures were poor because we, the first year we had the matches on at tea time. The logic being... You know, yes. if there are club games or whatever around the country, people will come in and watch the match at tea time, and it wasn't really working out. And then Tim O'Connor said the following year, "Do you know what? We're going to go with these games in, in the afternoon at three o'clock or half three or whatever the case may be." And you're thinking, "Okay, fine. If it didn't actually work last year, this isn't really going it's to work." Never you know? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? It did, and it took off straight and away. It started straight away. Yeah, started to not, didn't arrive like at the audience it has now, but certainly it was encouraging. Yes, you know, and you thought, yeah, yeah, yeah there is an something. audience for this. We're onto something yeah, here, yeah. yeah. And then it built and built, and th- that was it. And it's been, it's been phenomenal, hasn't it? Really, you know, when you think about it, like the live games, it the has, analysis journey, like people are kind of nearly as as focused on. And I have to say, like the analysis is, 
you know, sure. it'll always get a reaction. Sure, you sure. You know, uh, yeah. whether it's yeah. good or bad, you know, yeah. and, and, and that's what you want. Of course you know, it is, uh, yeah. Well, I, I think the first, the first thing about it is Gaelic games, and this isn't sort of being jingoistic about stuff or anything like that, but hurling and football are great games. Mm-hmm. So you're dealing with a good product to begin with. Yes. Yeah. And, and last weekend, uh, with the hurling on the Saturday and the hurling on the Sunday, I, on Sunday night after the programme, went home and I had taped the uh, Manchester United Bournemouth match because I'm a United fan. Right. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, compared to what I've seen over the weekend, yeah. this is actually like watching paint dry. Yes. You know? Yeah. Now, yeah. OK, ex- Bournemouth weren't exactly the, the high rate opposition kind of for the first game. But nonetheless, you know, it just felt like at a different level, kind of, you know. Yes. Yeah. Whereas the tension in Turles last Saturday night for the Kilkenny Waterford match you could cut it with a, a knife yes, and if you know yeah, it was yeah, unreal yeah, it was great crack yeah, yeah. because you know it was tough on the field it was tough on the sideline it was tough everywhere kind of, you know yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that's the first thing you know you have the product to yeah, deal with, with plenty of events and then you and try yeah, and, and yeah. embrace it with your analysts and the way you cover it and all that kind of stuff yeah, you know yeah speaking of the analysts like you've had as I said plenty of them um I'm not going to ask you to say best and worst, <laughs> but you can if you want. Well, no, you know, I mean, uh, but like you know, they've all added something different. They have, you know, between yeah. column and between sure, you know, yeah. like I mean, all the lads yeah. with the, you know, the, the football and stuff. It, it, does it? Does it? It obviously works, you know. Yeah, I mean, like you know, you asked me joking. I know the best and the worst, but I mean, the thing about it is, over the years, we have, we have developed a group of panelists, and they haven't all remained. Some mm. we've let go, you know, because didn't work out or you know maybe they had other things that they wanted to to go to but like you know on sunday you have colin work mm. pat spillan and joe brawley like they're stalwarts of the yes, thing yes. and they're still central to the whole thing mm. and and it's a good dynamic just to take those three for example because we know joe he's controversial yes, and all that yeah. we know pat but pat's more calculated about the way he goes around yes, it yeah. and then Column is the voice of reason in the middle of it all. <laughs> yeah. Except for about two or three weeks ago when Brolly wasn't uh, on the programme because he was away on holidays. So I said, and I, I said to the lads in the studio before, and at least we don't have to deal with Joe kind of, you know, and getting us in. And the next thing, Get Colum, us in trouble. Yeah, Colum, <laughs> yeah. Colum was summoning up somebody and he says, he'd be a great man, he says, to have a fight outside a chipper kind of a sat- on a Saturday night kind of, you know. Yeah. And I think, oh, gee, thanks, for, thanks, Colum, you know, thanks for this. Kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He took but, over the mantle. But, yeah, he did. Yeah. But like the thing is, you know, the, the, the analysts that we have, they're very articulate. Mm. They, they know what they're about. You know, okay, Joe and or Pat or whatever might say controversial things, but they know their sport. Yes. You know, these, and I think this is important to emphasize to people, these are not just fellas on blowing their mouths and, you know, expressing daft opinions, yes. you know. Uh, they know what they're talking about and they can back it up. Mm. Whether you agree with it or not, that's a different story, but at least they can argue a point and Absolutely. do it knowledgeably. Yeah. And that's all you want. You know, that's, yeah. that's what we try and get. Yeah, and like I mean, you know, and, and, and as you say, like Colm is, is involved in meet club football. He's always at games. You know, sure, it's not sure. like just that you get rolled up and he does a Sunday okay, game. No, 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 no. And, and the Brody, Brody is the same, like with yeah. the St. Bridges Club up in Belfast and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. And the hurlers are obviously the same, you know. Yeah, and all of our hurlers seem to be involved with, with other teams, like Anthony Daly yes, involved the, the Limerick Miners at the moment. Like he was involved with the Miners and then he came onto our programme that night, kind of, you know. So yeah, don't they're, they're hands on. Yes, don't log, yeah, obviously. Yeah. 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 The, it's, it's something, I don't know what, what you think, but it's, it's, it's funny. I was thinking about, I was watching Hurling obviously last week as well. And mm. within the first three or four minutes, I remember just, I was kind of watching it and the, the ferocity of it. The, the intensity of it and some of the hits I remember thinking to myself there'll be at least six or seven frees if this was a football game but at this stage you know sure. I actually thought did, did Kelly at one say did he forget the whistle like was it actually in yeah. his pocket or yeah. in his bag inside but the, the, the question I'll ask you is the hurling analysts are always very upbeat you know like I mean people would nearly say that the Sunday game hurt like Cyril and the boys Jer- like they're nearly always Pro the game, sure. pro the sports, yeah. you know, and it's always like, well, sure, don't worry about that. If a fella gets belted, just get up and get on yeah, it. Yeah. Whereas the football, of course, they're pro the game, but there's been this kind of, and maybe it's been driven by supporters, I don't know, or the rules, but between the black cards, yellow cards, red cards, the whole lot, there's nearly a focus sometimes, I think, on the card. Sure. 
element of mm. it, um, and 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 say, shall we say controversial incidents, you know, yes. um, which is probably what people are looking for. Sure. But uh, do you think it affects the, the the refereeing of the games? Do you think, like, you know, has I, it? Yeah, I'm not. Would it have that much of, a, of an impact? Do you think? I'm not sure about that. But let's let's just look at this first of all. Gaelic football is a more physical game than hurling. Mm. And that seems like a, a, an odd statement to make because, you know, anybody from outside the country, they see fellas arriving out on the field with sticks, you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah. they start praying, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But there's a kind Looking of, the there's a kind of, without putting this sort of, you know, too grandiose, but there's a kind of a code of conduct most of the time with hurlers mm. because they know they've got sticks in their hands and they know that they have to keep things within a certain reason. Yes. Whereas in football, as you well know, you can get a finger in the eye or a finger up the nose or a finger someplace else maybe, yeah, and, you yeah. know, or an elbow or a, you know, there, there's a lot more. You will see a lot more f- footballers with uh, crooked teeth than you will hurlers, yes, you know, which yeah, is a, yeah. an oddity in itself. Yeah. Then, you, you know, have teeth. So, uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but it's, it's simply because footballers get closer to each other you know if you've got a hurley and the other fellow has a hurley there's, yeah. a, there's a certain stand back in it kind yes, of, you know yeah. and there is uh, that old merit as you say sure. you know you have a we- look, look, it could sure. be classified as a weapon yeah. in your hand yeah i mean yeah. over the years you have seen very few hurlers deliberately draw a belt on some fella like okay you might give him a poke or you know, the hurl kind of or take an opportunity to slap a fella across the knuckles with a kind of when yes, the yeah, opportunity yeah. arises now it wasn't always that way because I remember <laughs> when I joined RT first we didn't see too much hurling down in Galway the part of Galway I came from because it's the football side of the, yes. of the county yeah. um, but I remember going with some mates of mine to a Munster Championship match Tip and Cork down in Cork and I remember we were behind the goal we were in the terrace behind the goal and the ball was was down the Cork end, Cork were attacking. And one of the Cork fellas slipped, and the cornerback, whose name I remember well from Tipperary, but he'll leave, leave his name out of it anyway. Right. He has your man on the ground at the hurl, and he's beaten the living daylights, <laughs> and he's beaten for fun, you know. <laughs> and in the meantime, the ball had been cleared up the field, so the ref obviously was up the other side, kind of just concentrating on the game. And your man said, oh, this is a great opportunity. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> and the four fellas on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> no helmets, of course. No helmets. Yeah, no, no, definitely no, no face guards. No face guards. Yeah. No helmets. Yeah. No gum shields. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I used to love the like I mean those you know the nineteen eighties the likes of Sylvie Lanan the lads the different fellas and when the helmet someone were just kind of perched on top of the head yeah. it wasn't even tied underneath yeah. you know the actual That's right. you know yeah. it was just kind of yeah. there yeah I don't know exactly what for no it was like it was like with some of them kind of and that. Uh, 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 Brian Whelan of Offaly always Offaly, reminded yeah. me of this kind of he'd have a kind of shove back in his head kind of it yeah. was more like a little sort of pill cap or something yeah. like that little kind of fashion <laughs> yeah. statement kind absolutely of as opposed zero to, protection yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't even look well you know it didn't even look well that's no, the point exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it was doing yeah. nothing and didn't even look well <laughs> yeah. no it's changed so much and you know the game has changed so much what do you think do, like are you enjoying it more and more you know because obviously as I said the emphasis now, um, you know, kind of in 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 when I was a, when I was a kid and watching the mm. Sunday game, the music would come on, and mm. it was it was it was a lot about the game, you know. Sure. Not I'm not saying, of course, it, the analysis was there, but it was a lot about the game because there was less exposure, I suppose, you know, um, and you'd always be kind of dying to see other games, but the 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 focus now on what is said and what is kind of discussed, like. Is that an, an added pressure on you on, on, from, a, from a preparation it's, point of view and everything else? It, it's a kind of a pressure, but at the same time, th- th- that whole aspect of things is more the public perception of it through, as you said earlier, the wider media that's there now. Right. Obviously, yeah. social media as well as everything else. For my, I, I can only speak for myself, what I try and do is the same as what I tried to do 30 years is ago. Is it? Right, yeah. okay. Which is, yeah. we've watched the match. What do you think, lads? Yes. Or we better talk about this, or you know, we can't ignore your man hitting the other fella or kicking yeah. the ref and blah 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 and whatever, you know. Uh, so, so the the core of it has stayed the same, but it has just a different dynamic out there yes. in the public, yeah. and there is more interest in it. But have you felt yourself having to get more? Uh, not like the headmaster, but like sometimes when some things are said, like you know, I've you know, not to bring you back to certain yeah. things, but like Joe may have said, and you've said, Linda, listen, hold yeah. on a second, you know, mm-hmm. and that's not someone in your ear. I'm sure that's just you. No, no, I mean, what I would always, yeah, what I would always try to do is I've never, I've never stepped on an analyst for expressing a strong opinion, right. providing he can either justify it or that it is broadly fair. 
Now, yeah. if you're if you're expressing an opinion of your own, then uh, it can be sub- it is subjective. Of course. But that you're not being blatantly unfair to somebody in yeah. what you say about them. That's yeah. that's the only lines that that and I don't want to see crossed. Cross. But that's reasonable. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's good. After that. If you want to express a view about a team or whatever, providing you can say, and the reason is A, B, and C, fine, okay, there you go. cool, yeah. 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 And, and the game at the moment, like I mean, the, obviously the the game has changed so much, you know, and the, it's it's moved on, and I suppose it's something, it's, it's a kind of a question we're nearly at, not asking everybody, but, you know, you've seen it, 32 sure. odd years, yeah. you know, and more, um, yeah. on how the game has developed. Mm. Do, you, do you think it's in a good state at the moment? Yeah, generally I do. Now, look, at, we'd all be liars if, if we said we thought Gaelic football was in a wonderful place at the mm. moment. I don't like the present style of Gaelic football, but again, I'm, I'm prepared to believe, I'm optimistic enough to believe that that's a passing phase right. and, and that that will change. Um, but generally, I think the commitment of players, the training, obviously, they're much fitter, they're much fa- I mean, that's, that's true with sport across the board, whether you're talking about soccer or rugby yeah. or anything else, yeah. you know. People are just better looked after these days in terms of looking after themselves and better ready to do the job they're out to do. Of course. And, and that's, that's the, the way it is. And it's, it's very good for that. Um, I, I genuinely think a lot of team managers and people behind teams have gone too far mm. with the self-analysis and all this kind of thing. And the things really bugs me is seeing fellas going on to these tracker yokes the G- in yeah, their jerseys. Yeah, kind of, yeah, you know. yeah, the GPS thing, If yeah. you can't look out the pitch and make an assessment of how a pl- player is doing yourself, you know. If I was an inter-county footballer and a fella gave me a jersey with one of these things, the first thing i do is go into the loo and hop it off the wall yeah. and then put it on me and say, all right, figure that out, boss. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or put it on a dog or something. Let him run around with it. Yeah, yeah give it to one yeah. of the lads up in the stands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell him to do a few laps. But it is, as you say, the best analysis with your own eyes, you know? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. 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 I mean, it, like, I remember watching back in the day, back in the 80s, Tony Doran playing for Wexford. Yeah. And Tony, with respect to him, Tony was a, a big lumbering guy. You know, he wasn't the quickest man across the ground. Right. But you'd look, and like he wouldn't be probably let on a team now, you know, unless he was told to, you know, lose three stone and yeah. go to the gym 50 <laughs> times a week and all yeah. the rest of it, you know. <laughs> but you'd look at matches and you'd see in those days the ball would be lobbed into the square and there'd be a scatter of bodies chasing. And you'd just see this big paw reach out yeah. and Tony would grab it. And then he would casually kind of take two steps away from everybody. Where he found the two steps, I don't know. Yes, but yeah, he would. Yeah. And just turn around and flick it Pop over, it the, over bar, the bar. You know? yeah. And you say to yourself, as long as there's a ball and there are posts at each end of the field, then there's a certain basic in this. Okay, I know there needs to be science. I know there needs to be yes, tactics. I know yeah, we need to yeah. have those things kind of, and that's fair enough. But but this, the basics don't change. Correct. Which is put the ball over the bar or under the bar. Correct. Yeah. 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 Christy Heffernan was a great man for that kind of. Um, I always remember watching him, that same kind of style lumbering around. Exactly. Oh, you just get it. Exactly. Yeah. And so effective. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think I think you'll actually start to find that it's like everything, I suppose, and and and. As you said, the science behind Gaelic football in Ireland, it's nearly become way too much, you know. Sure. And I can actually, I'm getting a vibe and speaking to a few fellas, even statistics and stats, where everyone was, you know, how many times did we actually, sure. like, we're analysing yeah. absolutely everything. That yeah. is now nearly being put to one side and it's okay, there's specific things you can look at, but, you know, some stuff, it's, it's overkill with some things. When I joined RT first and I was doing radio, I was sent over to do a documentary on Bill Shankly, the legendary Liverpool manager. Yes, yeah. Now, he had retired from the job at this stage, and Ian Paisley was the... Not Ian Paisley, uh, Bob Paisley yeah. was the... <laughs> that would have been... <laughs> it would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah. Was the Liverpool... But anyway, uh, we did this thing with Shankly, and we actually did it out at Liverpool's training ground. Right. And we were there for the best part of the day doing this. And at the end of the evening, I said to, to Shankly, I said... Just looking at the lads, I said, you know, they've done a lot of football. You know, they're doing five asides and, you know, knockabouts and things like that. Yeah. I, when, when did they do the other stuff? And he said, well, I said, you know, the press-ups and sit-ups and jogs Fitness, and yeah, sprints yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And he looked at me and he said, um, they're going out playing a football match on Saturday. They're not going to run the fucking marathon, you know. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> and I came away thinking, yeah, well, actually, fair enough. Absolutely. You know, yeah. 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 And, and i tell you what, he was right. He was yeah. right. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. The um, just to, to 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 wind her up. Anything any anything in the pipeline for the Sunday game? Anything? It's it's it's. I was just remarking to you earlier on about mm. the uh, the fashion. The fashion seems to have. It's nearly like a catwalk now. 
prior to. Do you yeah. do you do you hold your do you hang your head? <laughs> well, you no, I, I don't actually. The various three piece suits coming in. No, no, there, there are some interesting fashion statements. All right, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. But then I suppose you have to remember that when I joined the, the Sunday game, it was in the 80s. Yes, and this wasn't a great time fashion wise. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> yeah. and I think I think what summed it up was a few years ago there, um, RT were celebrating the 30th anniversary of. Or T two or whatever it was, and they were showing clips of Joe Brown. Of course, needless yeah. to say, there I pop up in the Sunday game yeah. from the mid eighties, this kind of nicely coiffed hair and all the rest of it. And we're sitting there looking at it. My wife said to me, "I can't believe I married you." <laughs> <laughs> You weren't wearing well, that kind of lime green jacket. You had a you had a beauty of a coat. I think you need I, to get I, that yeah, back and you out. The pr- yeah, but the problem when Galway win the All Ireland next, that yeah. has to come out. But the problem about it was for me. <laughs> you see, in the seventies, I had hair down to my shoulders. I had sideburns. I'm listening to Led Zeppelin. You know, I had a, I had a <laughs> denim jacket, kind of. You know, yeah, all was good. Yeah, and then you appear on television. And you can't look like that. Like so you're yeah, not, that yeah. Cut your hair and wear a suit and all this kind of stuff, you know. But it wasn't great. Jesus, it wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Michael, thanks a lot. That was absolutely thanks, fantastic. Anthony. Enjoyed it? Re- yeah, really, really enjoyed that. It was great to hear you, and it's uh, it's great to see you looking so well. Well, thank and, you, sir. Uh, thank you. Here's to the next... 30 odd years well next year anyway we'll have yeah, a go at yeah, that yeah. No, it's brilliant and uh, look before we let you go yeah. uh, we obviously are going to get our, our quiz master we generally have a um, we've been doing this with all the guests where we've been uh, choosing a few topics shall yeah. we say that yeah. uh, they should be able to handle so uh, we'll get our quiz master in Connor Neville who'll, Sorry. Uh, who'll, um, who'll, who'll, who'll throw a few questions well that's fair you. enough and I, I know this actually sounds pathetic and it actually is but genuinely, from we talked about my health issues, my memory isn't what it used to be. Okay, right. So I have already made excuse. If You're I just getting look, it in early. If I just look look at them blankly, <laughs> yeah. doesn't mean I don't know the answer. We it's might think the defibrillator. Forgotten where I am. You know, as long as as long as you don't collapse on us, <laughs> we won't make them that hard. That's one of the worst excuses I've ever come up with. But anyway. <laughs> So, Connor, with that uh, health warning in place, yeah. uh, it's that was you. A, that was a rather uh, cynical attempt to uh, sway the uh, quiz master now. And well, I, did, I didn't appreciate it now because I, I was no, I, 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 I think that's fair enough. So I, I just change it. Can I just say, not guilty? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Right. So we're, we're, we're going to do this rightly now. There's, there's going to be no uh, prompting. Sort of, no prompting. By the way, and I, I, I Anthony, ignore that. Yes, total. Yeah. T- I, my eyes. Are, I mean, obviously, people can't hear, kids can't see this, but you know, I'm, I'm totally, we, I'm, I'm we, omnipotent here. Yes, yeah. we, 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 we believe you. Yeah. Also, I'm looking around me here with the other lads in the room, and I'm thinking I'm not going to get much help there. So, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Are we are we ready to go? Yeah. Yeah. Can you state your name, please? Uh, I, Michael Thomas Lester. Or actually, now that you ask me, I think more correctly, it is Lister. But we we pass on from that. <laughs> It's comfortably, comfortably the longest answer I've ever got to that question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Delay time. <laughs> yeah. There is a bit of stalling for time here. Michael Lister, uh, Michael Thomas Lister, uh, your specialist subject which we have chosen for you is which pundit said this? Oh, God. Right. Uh, Joe Brody. Yeah. Every, yeah. <laughs> question one. They know as much about serious level sport as I know about the sleeping patterns of the Ayatollah. That sounds like Pat Spillane. Incorrect. Don Logue Cusick. Same territory. (laughs) Question two. Morris Deegan today, he did something to Tyrone that normally only happens between consenting adults in private. I suppose if I kept with Pat Spillane, I'd eventually get it right, wouldn't I? Not not yet, anyway. Not yet, yeah. Joe Brawley. Yeah. You're, you're making an assumption here, by the way, that I listen to their yeah, answer. Exactly. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> I can see that's a problem already. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. I just want to make a point here. He's a better player than Cooper. He's one of the greatest I've ever seen. In my opinion, Cooper is a two-trick pony. I just really believe that. I'm just making a point which I feel about him personally, having watched him, studied him. Without even doing the mannerisms or the accent, I can tell you that was Joe Brawley. It wasn't actually. It was Afro- no. <laughs> that was Martin McHugh. I thought I talking about I said, James right, I'll take, I'll take a punt on that. It sounds <laughs> good. <laughs> talking. About, you sounded so confident. I did. There no, I did. Well. Michael, I, 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 had myself, the I had myself. I had myself convinced there with that one. <laughs> have we actually got the real Michael Lister here? Yeah. Is, this, uh, uh, is there a double that RT have shelled out on? Question four. 
Galway didn't want to win today. They will probably say they did. But it's like the Rose of Tralee saying she wants world peace. She doesn't really care about world peace. Would I be, would I be off the mark if I said Pat Spillane again? Yeah, you would. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, I kind of thought I was, would. Yeah. That was Joe Brawley. Yeah, Joe Brawley, yeah. No, I have, I, have all the, I have all the guys now. It's just I don't have them in the right yes, order. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, you're getting there. I'm getting there. Come on. We have, this, we have, is, uh, this is not looking very good now. It's I'm, not looking I'm, great, no. <laughs> Mar- anybody got Marty Morrissey's number? Yeah. <laughs> Question five. Here comes the first... This is quite a long one now. Here comes the first blow where Dempsey hits Darren Fay. Anthony Finnerty comes in and just gives... A, and comes in just to finish him off a little bit and gives him a touch of the elbow. And here you have, just in the next one then, Colm Coyle in the background hitting Finnerty. This is Colm's first punch. Finnerty, delayed reaction, looks around, sees Martin O'Connell coming and decides the best action is to go down. <laughs> That's now, I wouldn't have a clue because that's going back a bit now. Yeah. The 1996 nice. All Ireland final replay. Yeah, yeah. That's, famous that's clip on YouTube. No. You've, you've, you've guessed him a few times. I probably have. It's either Pat Spillane and Joe Brawley, or I presume that wasn't Colin Moroc. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, go on, Joe Brawley. Incorrect. That was Pat Spillane. Michael Lister, <laughs> you scored zero out of five. It's a travesty. It's, it's, uh, I was set up. You were and, set and up. And in actual fact, you just made those up. The questions yeah. didn't suit you, as they say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. think was, I think it was on a topic that really... We should have I, I suppose... I should asking, should asking, should asking Michael should. Lester questions about the Sunday game was asking for trouble, all right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I, I should say, perhaps smugly, uh, I get paid a lot of money to ask the questions, not <laughs> yeah, to provide not the to answers. <laughs> yeah. Pulling out wages now. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way to answer that. <laughs> That's worth at least five out of five. <laughs> well, Michael, uh, unfortunately, you don't uh, top get the, the prize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, a we, we, jersey. we might have a, a, a bumper prize for it. Like, I mean, literally zero. We, we, we could we have, have a we could have a last play a relegation playoff if anyone else correct zero. Out yeah, of five. yeah. It hasn't enough. happened yeah, yet. I mean, Bernard Brogan got two out of five. Is that right? Yeah, yes. three, three out of five. Was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but it's, but look. It's Wednesday. I'll do the lot of numbers. Exactly. They'll go better. You know what? Conditions in here didn't suit you. No, they didn't. No, yeah. it was too warm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and the fellow yeah. with the fan behind him there. <laughs> yeah. he, was, he was putting you off. He, he said, I think it's a bit warm in here, so I put on the fan. It, he didn't explain. He was actually putting it on himself rather than also. Yeah. I've never heard such a parade of excuses after the quiz. Oh, don't worry. If you stick with this long enough, you will. Yeah. Well, Michael, look, absolutely fantastic. And uh, you, as I say, great to have you on again. It was brilliant. And I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, chat to you soon. Cheers.